All right, 2002 Jeep Liberty, uh, 45 RFE, uh, came in for one problem. We actually found another problem, but uh, all with the, all within the valve body. But the main problem of why this came in is when this Jeep got hot, there was no crank, no start, and I actually had no communication with the transmission control module. This has a separate module. It's an early car. So it has a separate module and the engine control module is a separate module. So the guy brings it in, we let it run, and we get it to happen. We get it not to start. And right away I notice that I have no communication. So I'm thinking, okay, shouldn't be that bad, uh, being the fact that it doesn't crank or start and park or neutral. And in fact, I have no communications, probably something going on with the computer, because I've seen that a lot on other cars. When I have no communication with the trans module, most of the time it's a computer. So what I did uh, to verify that, or to start the diagnosis process, um, I checked my power in on certain pins. I don't remember what pins they were. I think it might have been uh, 11 and 17. Uh, pin number eight, you have no voltage, but you have voltage only in the crank position, which I had, and I checked my grounds. I think that's maybe like pin 53, 56, something like that. Um, and everything looked good. So uh, what I decided to do as a test um, is I have another, it's a 60 weight connector, kind of like a caravan, and basically the uh, you know, most of the, of the, you know, looking at the wiring diagram was a, a lot the same, like the power and grounds were the same. So I figured I, I when I got it to happen, uh, take the connector out, put it into this other computer, see if it would start and didn't start. And I know that computer is good, so the computer is not my problem. I was lucky enough to have a computer here. Uh, so I move on to the next thing. Um, so what I decided to do when it didn't start is I went into the engine control module and I was seeing what kind of data I got. So I got up to the park neutral switch, uh, which is incorporated into the solenoid pack. And it's in park. It doesn't start, but it's reading RDL, reverse drive and low. That's why it's not starting. And then I kind of left the... I, I let it sit for 20 minutes. I went back, I checked it again through the engine control module, and now it reads park and it starts right up. So I think I got something going on with the solenoid pack. Um, so after um, uh, after I you know figured that out, we got the okay to pull the solenoid, to pull the valve body down. And as you know, this is a black connector, so this is the early connector, and it's going to be replaced with the white connector. And any time you replace that, you have to replace the the cam or the slide plate. So now what I want to do actually is uh, get a little closer because when we had the pan down, uh, the tech had called me over and said, you know, there's something in the pan. So we took a look at it. It's a, it's a piece of a bracket and a broken bolt. And that came off of this, which I want to give you a close-up shot, and also a, uh, a mangled ring. Uh, Teflon ring and that is this plate here so this plate is pretty common to crack um, because um, you know this one cracked off here this bolt was loose this thing flexes because it's uh, I guess it's very you know the metal's not that thick so it flexes and as it's moving and flexing the, I guess the bolts are coming loose and then it, it, it totally just broke this off and cracked here and bent so I have a replacement Sonics, you know, much more stronger reinforced. I actually have to drill it out to put three extra bolts in. This is the Sonics plate, but I want to get a little closer and show you this, you know, this plate right here. And then what we'll do is uh, we're going to put the, a new plate on as a template, and we've got to drill a couple more holes, drill them out, tap them, because there's... Uh, I think there's three extra bolts that they want you to go in around in this area. I did one already as a test and it worked out good, so we've got to do a, a few more. 
Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer because I want to show you this thing up close, and then we'll take it out. We'll take the accumulators out, and we got to put that new plate on and drill holes and tap them, and then put everything back together, and then swap out the solenoid pack, which you know is fairly simple to do. But again, it's the black connector, and we're updating it to the white connector. So let me get a little closer. I want to mainly work on this. Um, you know, close up to show you guys this one. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, I just want to give you guys first a close up shot of this plate for the accumulators. Again, as you can see, this piece is broken right off here. We got a crack here from it flexing, and this bolt was loose. This is just how I found it. Um, when I, you know, when I saw this stuff, when I cleaned this stuff off, looked in the pan, and uh, I said, oh, probably that plate is no good. And here's the, uh, here's the broken bolts. This was in the filter. This is the Teflon ring right here. Whoop, there goes that. That actually was broken in here, the, the um, other part of the bolt, but that came right out. That screws right out. So we have the Sonics, uh, kit that we're going to put in. All right, so we got some bolts with washers here. So we've got to drill it out. Actually, i got to go get the drill. And we're going to take this off, put the other one on, drill a couple of holes, tap them, and put the plate on. All right, so um, now I'm going to just uh, put you guys on hold again. Uh, let me go get the drill because i got the battery charging inside. And then we will work on this right here, continue on this. So once again, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to take these existing uh, bolts out here, and we do have to use some of these over again. And Sonics, I think they give you six, but we're going to be using, I believe, a total of nine. take these uh, accumulators out make sure the rings are good you know the ring on the one is no good I can't actually believe this thing even worked as good as it did when it did work all right so here's the old one here and let's take these let's take these out this this accumulator has one spring and all the rest have two This, of course, is missing the one ring. We've got to be careful with this, this reverse valve here. If you, this, uh, there's a plug and there's a small valve in here. Um, I think they might ac actually call it like the reverse switch valve. And we've got to be careful when we're rinsing this out that that doesn't fall out, the valve doesn't fall out, because then no reverse. Okay, so this. It's going to go on here, and we got to drill one here and one here. This one I did already. These uh, have smaller holes, so probably more like a lineup. Okay, here. 
there. Put a couple on. Okay, so the drill is the number 19 drill, which is 166 thousandths. And I have the tap is like a really small, like a 5 by 8 tap. This, I think, is, uh, let me actually, let me get that drill size for you. All right, all right, the drill size is 1164. All right, so we're going to do this one first. I just got to kind of hold this thing here. This one we can go all the way through and this one we got to go I guess so far and stop. fix this here. Here we go one second. Okay, so this one is through. I just had to fix the, uh, so the tap would stay in.
too far in. This is actually the first time I've seen one of these break like this. And I'm actually the first time I'm using one of these sonics plates. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, let me get a size here. This one here, you know what, I'm gonna go a little further. Tiny, tiny bit more. You know, the other two were fairly simple because you just kind of go all the way through and then just thread the hole. So let's see how this is now. Very nice. Yes, okay. Wash is not moving. Okay. All right, so now let me um, let me clean up, uh, get everything cleaned up, clean the bench up. Um, we'll put the accumulators back in and put the plate on. All right, so these can come off. So we're gonna put the Sonex bolts here and the original OE bolts, I think we put here. I gotta actually look at the instructions again. But they give you six of them, and I believe the six of them are all together, and then the rest are the regular uh, bolts that come with the valve body. I'll put the washers on. Also in the Sonix kit. I'll put it at the bottom here. But I want to clean all that up anyway. Alright, so let me get cleaned up here. I will be back in a few. Okay, so let's put this. Alright, I'm going to put a new set of 
have rings on here for the accumulator. Okay, and that washer, <clears throat> I thought it went in this one, but it actually it doesn't. I was just looking at it real quick, and it it goes in the uh, overdrive. It is the overdrive canoe, but it is the end one with the one spring. So all these can go back in, because those rings are okay. And then the one spring here is part of the kit. They want you to put this washer down here, the spring in, and that. Okay, and as I was washing this up in the sink to get all the, the chips out and stuff from the uh, uh, drilling it and tapping it, this is the reverse valve or the reverse switch valve. And that actually just fell right out. So that's, you want to be real careful with that. All right, so that's in place. <clears throat> So they want uh, the OE screws. Whoops, give me one second here. four here are the OE screws and then we go with three uh, on the top three and the bottom of the screws in the kit So this is better reinforced, <clears throat> the plate is much stronger so it won't flex. So this worked out nice. And I guess what we can do is zip off the uh, solenoid pack. Okay. <clears throat> All right. 
right, so now the solenoid pack. Get back out, we need to back out just a little bit. Okay. these four. Here's your manual valve right here. Let me just drain for a moment. Let's take the manual valve out so what happens to it. I want to give it a quick brush off in the sink. Okay. All right, so um, I cleaned it all down. I went over these bolts again to make sure everything is tight. So first we'll put this plate on. All right, we're gonna make sure we catch the manual valve. All right, that looks good. the same setting. It's kind of hard to see up uh, in the car, you know, because you got to, this has to go into the, uh, into the, the linkage, of course, so the car will have forward and reverse, and it's a little bit tough to see up in there sometimes. So I mark the uh, spot that it's on and put it back in the same one. So this actually is neutral, reverse, and that would be part.
So now these are going to get torqued down about 70 inch pounds. These are good here. So that is complete. And once again, we got a 2002 Jeep Liberty with a no crank, no star condition hot. Uh, I had found when it was hot that the uh, rain switch located inside the solenoid pack was reading reverse or drive. And then when it cooled down, it would actually go back to reading park. And then, of course, it would start right up. All right, and then upon dropping the pan and the two filters, I'm changing the one filter. I'm changing, of course, the other one, the cooler return filter. Uh, we found these broken bolts, bracket, and, and kind of mangled up uh, Teflon ring in the pan. And this was no good to plate. And this wasn't made very well, you know, I believe it's a very weak metal and from these accumulators working it's constantly flexing and when it's flexing it loosens the bolt and then it breaks the bolt and uh, this one was broken off with the bracket piece here and this one was back all the way out pretty much up against the case. So that's new from Sonics. First time I did one of those, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. And I guess that's about it. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next one. And let me get uh, to installing this valve body. All right, we'll see you next one.